This is Susan Matt- Matson, Master Gardener. This afternoon, I'm at the Spicer Library with Joel Karsten, and he is the person who has written a couple of books on straw bale gardening. There have been questions that many of you have had on that type of gardening, and it's very unique. It also is very Uh, Once you get it set up, can be very easy for some people. So I'm going to ask Joel some questions, and uh, I'll hand the microphone to him to answer. And then we will um, have the program at 5 o'clock. So if people are coming, they'll be coming a little bit later. So first of all, I would like to have Joel describe how he became interested in using straw bales for gardening. I know he has a background in horticulture, but you would have had to think a little bit about planting plants in straw bales. Thank you, Susan. Um, I'm Originally, I'm from a small crop and dairy farm down in the southwest corner of Minnesota. And every once in a while, as a young boy, we'd have a broken bale that would lay by the barn. And I would notice how great big, tall, healthy thistles would grow out of those bales. And then 15 years down the road, when I graduate from college and I buy my first house, and I discover that I have about one inch of topsoil, and I had no money to build raised beds, like a lot of brand new homeowners, um, young people are in that situation. Um, I couldn't build raised beds, but I thought about, how about using a straw bale for this technique? So I started doing some research and I tried to find some academic research, any papers or anything where somebody had ever done it, and I couldn't really find anything. So I ended up just doing some, a bunch of experiments on my own, um, and that'll be 23 years ago this spring when I started doing it. And uh, I've, over the years, I just sort of perfected a really simple step-by-step process method uh, to make it really easy um, for people to do it. So pretty much anybody can do it, uh, young people or old people. And um, in looking through your book this morning, I was looking at the different four, the four different steps that you describe uh, for setting up the bales, uh, fertilizing them, and then getting the seeds or seedlings planted, and then um, doing your main harvest, which everyone looks forward to. But um, I think there's some advantages with having uh, straw bales, and I'd like to have you explain a little bit about those advantages. The, um, I know as I've gotten older, it's been a lot easier if I don't have to crawl around on the ground when I do my gardening, but I end up doing it anyway. And if you don't want to have raised beds, um, straw bales are an option. And also you might want to mention why you need to have straw bales. Well, it, there are lots of advantages and it would take us a while to talk through all of those but let's just hit the main ones to begin with uh the number one reason people love straw bale gardening is because there's no weeds that's the biggie um once you get your straw bales prepared during the preparation period the 12-day conditioning period we call it where you're you're really what you're fundamentally doing is growing bacteria inside the bales and then the bacteria colonize the bale and they start to turn the straw into soil and during that time the bales get really hot inside really warm and that warmth will help or heat will help to sterilize any potential seeds that could be inside that bale and really what's happening is you're making new soil inside the bale so the big big misconception is that you're growing in straw and you're really not straw is just the substrate that you use to make new soil um, inside the bale so now it's raised up off the ground that's a big advantage as well there's no weeds and it's you know knee high or so off the ground um, you can start a little bit earlier with your planting because the bales get warm during the conditioning period. If you start this right at the end of winter, real early spring, the bales will get really warm, then they'll cool down a little bit, but you can plant at least a week or two weeks earlier than you normally ever would dare plant. And when you do plant, you're planting into a root zone that's much warmer inside the bale. So the plants tend to get a big jump start on the season. Um, straw holds moisture really well. so. Uh, It tends to hold on to moisture better than, certainly better than sandy soils do. Um, That's another big advantage, of course. And the other thing that goes along with that is you can't overwater a straw bale. So you put too much on, it just runs out the bottom. So you'll never flood a straw bale garden either. Um, You know, there there are lots of advantages, but those are the main, main ones to start out with. I was, um, in looking through your book, I also noticed the different locations that people can put straw bales. They don't have to necessarily have um, an area in their yard where they would 
normally have a garden. They could have straw bales on a deck. They could have them on a balcony if they live in an apartment. Some of those things you have to watch a little bit when you water because water will, as you say, run out of the bottom of the bales. And if you have neighbors living below you and they and you're out on your deck or out on your balcony, you might want to have some kind of um, mechanism in place so that you um, can get rid of the water that's running down <laughs> off the balcony. But I didn't um, enjoy that. I also looked at some pictures of people who had small straw bale gardens where they had one or two bales. And then you get people who have rows of them. So there's also some things they have to remember. Watering was one of them to start out with watering your bales quite a bit at the beginning but then also continuing that watering through the season after your plants are in there. Um, another thing is the fertilizer. And you might want to talk a little bit about preparing then. It, uh, we call it conditioning. And it's, it's fertilizing, but it's a, we need to clarify that we're not feeding plant roots here. What we're feeding is bacteria bacteria like nitrogen. So really the fertilizer we put on is just a source of food for the bacteria to grow the bacteria so that they colonize the bale. They then decompose the straw and that broken down straw turns into molecules and that's what actually feeds our plants later in the season. Um, so during that period you can use, if you're an organic gardener, you're going to use a protein source to provide that nitrogen, something like blood meal, feather meal works really well. Um, Melorganite is something people often use as it's an organic fertilizer. Um, I tell people to stay away from coffee grounds or or uh, compost tea. It just doesn't have enough nitrogen content. You got a lot of carbon. You need to build up lots of bacteria. So stay away from the ones that don't have a lot of nitrogen in them. And you can read the label on the fertilizer, and it'll tell you what percentage of nitrogen you want to look for at least five percent to make it work. And then we give you the exact step by step how to do that in the book. Other lawn fertilizer works well for the regular traditional gardeners. Um, just something with lots of nitrogen in it is really what you're looking for. Make sure it doesn't have any herbicide in it. Um, I have gotten calls from people who accidentally put weed and feed on their straw bales. That's not good. Um, so as long as it doesn't have that in it, uh, 12 days of preparation, you put a half a cup on every other day and essentially you're going to be ready to go. Um, so it doesn't take very long to get that bacteria built up and for those bales to get warm and then start to cool off and then, then it's planting day. So planting day comes around and uh, we are looking at bales. Um, so the person with the seeds is wondering, how am I going to get the bale, the seeds inside those bales because they're so, they're so small. Um, we're also looking at small plants. How are they going to be supported in the straw and so on. Okay, if you normally plant things from seed, I want you to go ahead and plant from seed into the bales as well. But you need to make a seed bed. And what I don't want you to do is take your shovel over to your garden and take a scoop of soil and put on top of the straw bales. Because if you do that, you just brought a whole scoop full of weed seeds and potentially any diseases or insects that are harbored in last year's soil, and you've introduced it to the straw bale. So the new soil that's made in the bale is going to be you know, relatively sterile without weed seeds, without disease and insects, um, because it's brand new soil. Um, so we make a little seed bed on top of the bales using good clean compost. If you're a good composter and you've made your own compost, you can use that. It has to be well decomposed compost, so it doesn't have any weed seeds viable in it. Or just buy a bag of planting mix from the garden center. So you know that there's no disease or weed seeds in it. You spread a thin one inch layer on top of the bales and then you put your seeds in that. For small seeds, it's important that you have this seed bed for things like carrots and radish, things like that. But for bigger seeds like peas and beans, I've gotten to the point where I just, if the seeds are big enough that you can stick them in the bale and they stay in position, you really don't really need a lot of the, of the potting mix or any potting mix uh, with them. But for transplants, you s just simple as making a hole in the bale enough to get the okay. the pot down in there i always remove the peat pots i don't know what you think uh, about the peat pots yeah, but yeah. i like to take those off i think that's a terrible idea that they came up with making those peat pots but take the peat pot off and just shove the root ball down into the bale maybe put a handful of that potting mix around just to heal it in a little bit and then water it in um for watering we use either a soaker hose or a dripper style system, irrigation system. You use the dripper, it's more expensive to install, but long term it's much more efficient. They tend to last longer as well. And then with either one, the trick to watering, I always tell people the number one mistake straw bale gardeners make, new, new straw bale gardeners, is they overwater. 
it's very easy to overwater. Once a bale is saturated, if you put more water on it, just runs through the bale and it carries with it all your soluble nutrients like nitrogen and calcium. So just a few minutes, one minute per bale is really usually enough. And we never increase the duration of watering. But during the hot part of the summer, we may increase the frequency. So just put a hose end timer on the end of that soaker hose. Now you can set the timer to go off three times a day if you want for five minutes at a time. Instead of watering for 45 minutes in the morning, where the first five minutes the, the bale is saturated, and then the next 40 minutes it just runs right out the bottom. Yeah. So that sounds pretty easy so far. Um, our next question is, um, so this is your yard that you're talking about. And um, you live in a suburb. You don't necessarily live in the country where there are straw bales. And so tell me a little bit about how it works in someone's yard. Is it um, something that your neighbors might object to? Are they worried about uh, pests getting into the straw bales? That's the number one question I always get is, do straw bales attract mice? Absolutely a dry straw bale would attract the mouse, but once they get wet, it's not a place conducive at all for a, for a mouse to make a house. Um, I always tell people, as long as you don't have a bunch of bird feeders right by your straw bale garden, you won't ha usually have problems with rodents. If you do have moles and voles, you can put hardware cloth wire down on the ground and then put the bales on top of that. Then they won't come up from the bottom of the bale, and that solves that problem. As far as how's the bales look, I always tell people to bribe your neighbors with tomatoes and keep them happy. <laughs> that, that works good. Um, you know, my mother was that way. She never really loved how the straw bales look. But then I started putting flowers in the sides of the bales. Just plant petunias and impatience and, you know, a few marigolds in the side. And when they fill in, it makes the sides of the bales look real pretty. Um, there are also some companies now that make containers, wooden containers the size of a bale. So you could buy a container and put it in there if you wanted to. Or you could build a little container around it out of a recycled pallet or something. Um, if, if you go on our, we have about 102,000 people now on Facebook that do this. So they all give all their ideas. So if you're looking for inspiration and you're a Facebooker, just go on Facebook and search straw bale gardening and you'll see thousands of people with great ideas for you. Well, the other thing that I thought was pre pretty interesting, there was a picture of some straw bale gardening in France, and it looked like they had a thousand bales. And it was just this really beautiful um, design that they had put together using the straw bales. And so, I mean, that was kind of interesting to me. Um, another question I had, too, in looking through your book, which is really valuable, this is the Straw Bale Gardens Complete. Uh, it um, talks a little bit about supports for plants that are vines, also for your tomato plants. So what works really well for supports? Well, being a farm boy, uh, the first thing I thought of when I started, you know, I used to try to use tomato cages when I first started. And then I put a post next to each cage, but they just weren't very efficient. And the problem with the tomato cage, in my opinion, is that it's three-dimensional. So it's hard to get good air circulation inside that tomato cage. So I put a couple fence posts at the end of the row of bales. So I have five bales, and then I put a fence post at each end. And then I just put electric fence wire between the two, which is very inexpensive wire you can buy at any farm store. Um, and I stretch it tight. So to to tighten up the wires, if you pull it too tight, it just bends the posts over. So I put a board, two by four, between the two posts. That way I can tighten the wires up and it makes a really, not a bad looking trellis. It's kind of non-intrusive and when it's covered with vine, it looks real green and looks pretty. And it's very strong. Even a big guy like me, I can climb right up on that trellis and it won't break the wire. So it's really strong and durable. Um, all my tomatoes climb up there, of course. I just weave them back and forth. And then my cucumbers, I'll let those climb up on there. And even my potatoes, I'll make them vines you know they won't climb on their own but you kind of train them up there it's sweet potato vines um, my acorn squash i'll get to climb up on there uh, peas and beans go up on the trellis so um, it gets all that foliage up in the air which really ch changes a lot of uh, keeps the foliage drier in your garden which is a good thing yeah and so Don, tell me a little bit about what you do with, with all your vegetables so what happens when you start picking all your tomatoes, all your potatoes? Uh, do you have a good place besides your neighbors? Well, we do don donate a, a lot of stuff to the food shelf in, in, uh, just outside of Roseville. Um, but we eat a lot of vegetables. I can stuff. We do, I do lots and lots of tomatoes, put up lots of tomatoes and uh, pesto. And um, we have the freezers full for sure in the fall. And um, we, I do eat a lot of vegetables, so yeah. I know it's hard to tell by looking at me, but I do eat a lot of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I was just um, thinking about, I know we had some discussion at our Master Gardener meeting about using straw bales and using them a second year. In some cases, most people recommended not using them a second year. Um, so what's the plan after you, you get through harvesting, you bring in all your vegetables, you're wrapping up the, for the season, what's the best way to get rid of those straw bales? When the straw bales are done, after either one season or if you, if you bought really heavy bales, mm -hmm. you'll see that the heavier and the denser the bale, the more likely you are to get a second season out of it. But the second season, the bales don't get warm again. So I wouldn't use it for my warm season crops like tomatoes. I would put potatoes and other root crops in a second season bale. But if you, if you do get a second season, by the end of that year, it's gone. It's really become a little pile of compost. And I always tell people, you've made your own miracle grow at that point. So use that in your pots, on your patio, to plant flowers or in your window boxes, as you would normal potting mix that you would buy. It works really good. You can use it as mulch around your perennials or use it in your annual beds to just till it in and help improve the soil. It works great for that. And you'll see there's a chapter in the new book about using leftover bales from last year to make new bales, uh, which has become a big thing. And I'm, I'm actually heading to, at the end of this month, I'm going to Cambodia. And in Cambodia, they have to make their own. They don't have Han John Deere balers or New Holland balers there. They have to make their own bales. So part of the recycling of that organic material, there it's all rice straw that they use. But um, we're going to do a whole alternative agriculture program in, in Cambodia for a lot of the you know people who are economically challenged and don't have the great soil and they don't have the soil that doesn't flood um, so they can it can be hard for them to grow food so we're going to teach them how to do that well so composting your old bales uh, another thing that I noticed and I, I just as you were talking I happened to think of this bales are tied together with um, twine or with wire uh, you have to make sure that the bales are in the right position. Uh, you want to have them facing which direction? Um. Well, anybody who's been a farm kid will know that every bale has two sides. It has a cut side and a folded side. Um, and you'll know that if you're a farm kid, you know that right away because inside the baler, it gets sliced off on one side. And if you rub that side against your leg when you're stacking bales, you get a big rash on your leg. But city kids wouldn't know that. Now you'll know that, that there's a difference. So try to find the cut side of the bale that's been shaved off. And we want that side facing up if possible. It's much easier to get your water and your fertilizer to work into the bale from that side. And then I also like to keep the strings running around the bale. That way, when you go to plant with a sharp trowel in the top of the bale, you don't accidentally cut a string. Um, which, you know, you, you want to keep the strings intact because a broken string means a loss of compression and it won't decompose as quickly as we need it to. So keep the strings around the sides and, you know, other than that, it really doesn't make that, in the long run, it doesn't make that big of a difference. So. Uh, positioning your bales, uh, if for instance, when you look at my yard, I have one area that is quite sunny. A lot of shade in my in my yard. Um, people around here always complain about shade. Lots of trees in their yard. And so, what's a good position to set up your garden? Well, you gotta have a sunny spot if you want to grow vegetables. <laughs> so you might invest in a chainsaw first, right? Um, find a sunny spot, and then I like to run the rows of bales north and south. That way, you get east sun on the east side, morning, and you get west sun on the setting sun side. If you run them east and west, now you only get sun on that southern side of the bales and the trellis in particular, and very very little will grow on the north side of the bales. Otherwise, remember, we're planting the sides of the bales as well as the tops, so we want to have good sun. And the best way then is north and south. Mm -hmm. it, if It's not a deal breaker if you can't go north and south, but that's just ideal. Okay. Now, um, I don't have any other questions. Can you think of anything else you would like to mention to folks? I know in this area, in Candioha County, our soil in the northern part of the county isn't very good for growing. You can put a lot of compost into it. You can add a lot of uh, peat, moss. You can put a lot of things into it, but we have soil that's full of clay and gravel, and it's not the best. And so a lot of people are experimenting with straw bales, but maybe you can think of a few tips you'd like to add before we finish. Well, I would just encourage people to try it. You know, that's the, the big thing is, is there's, you know, people are always skeptical when they hear something new. Um, but I've convinced some real true horticulturalists to, to try straw bell gardening. And once they try it, they just fall in love with it. I mean, the writer for the Kansas City Star newspaper was extremely skeptical the first time she ever heard about this. And now she writes 10 articles a summer. She's just fallen in love with it. Uh, the former editor of 
gardening for Better Homes and Gardens um, is a huge fan of straw bale gardening. So try a couple of bales. And that's what I tell people is you'll convince yourself. You'll see uh, when you stick your hand in that bale and it's nice and warm, you can see the benefits that you're getting from that straw as it's breaking down. And you'll see what the straw turns into, just this beautiful composted material that, you know, if you were a plant, you'd love to live in it. It's really that nice. So um, just give it a try. That's the main thing I tell people is, you know, get a couple of bales and, and give it a go. And you'll, you'll convince yourself. I won't need to convince anyone. Well, I appreciate having the opportunity to interview Joel. I have often thought about getting you out here, and I'm glad you are here in our county tonight. And uh, good. And so with that, we will end our Master Gardener program for the month, and we'll see you next month.